And uh, if you're able to just sweep up a few prizes as quickly as that, the game can be over. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty consistent deck once it gets set up to with the double Makargo, the double Oranguru as well. Yeah, and that engine is just so sturdy. Uh, it's even more surprising that Caleb also played the Aloha Muck and he was able to navigate around that as well. Yeah, so. well, uh, we, one difference we actually noted from him before was the Zeke Strike Cut. So here we have Pedro and Henrique, and he has a top 16 at the very first Latin America International Championship, is also a 2016 uh, regional champion, and then a 2018 top 16 at regionals as well. Yeah, so this is definitely one of his best performances to date. Are doing so well already at one Latin American International Championships. He loves it here. Yeah, and not playing Passimian. He is no. playing Zorark Control, uh, essentially. I'm uh, embarrassed. <laughs> not the same list as uh, Danny and Caleb no. and all of them that brought it, but very similar. It's kind of crazy how they both got to this deck. They, say they came to the same conclusion, even if it's not the same 60 cards. Pedro does have a couple of choice bands in his list, and he, I think he has a few less controlling tools. Uh, so that's something to bear in mind as we go into this uh, game. Apologies again. Um, I thought it was a Pacific archetype. I've got my players mixed up. Of course, we have seen Pedro already today in the tournament, and uh, he has piloted this Zara control archetype very successfully to get into this top four place. Yeah, meanwhile, Nicolas Galaz, top eight at Worlds in 2018, top 16 at Worlds 2015, top four at regionals this past year and then at top four at regionals as well so really not having that big win no he's really hunting it down he's getting close now he's defied the odds already in his top eight game all he needs to do is one more defiance of the odds to get through another zorak control archetype you can see on those slides as well pokemon catcher one of the cards that's helped him get there it's a coin flip effect but sometimes you're just trying to do some math fixing problems with this a Gramble archetype, you don't have the luxury of a Guzma, so sometimes some big heads flips can bring up those stage two Pokemon, or sorry, those two prize Pokemon, so that you can close games. Yeah, it's also a card that you can just burn out of your hand to mm -hmm. keep your hand to zero, uh, even if you don't even care if you get the heads or not. Yeah, sometimes it's good enough just to uh, burn it out of the hand. It's an insta playable card, so that's one less sticky situation. If you are able to loop it with Diantha, which won't be the case in this game, more than likely. Uh, you can get multiple procs of that uh, Pokemon catcher as well. So definitely a cool card that's helped him make his own list original. We did hear in, in, in an interview earlier that he loves his 60 cards. He thinks he's made it the optimal 60. And who can argue when he's this far through the tournament? Yeah, basically been playing Zork for over a year now and had kind of some very <laughs> success with it before, but then now finally coming into it top four here at oh man, look how calm he looks he's in the top four of an international championships and he's just sort of yawning right now he's just so casual about this he's already been able to navigate one matchup i wonder what his secret was and whether or not he can do it again well it definitely could have been those shrine of punishments unfortunately it looks like there's two in the prize cards one of the very important cards in this matchup just because your opponent is going to have a bunch of GX Pokemon in play. That is yikes. Two Shrine of Punishments and a Tate and Liza when the deck is trying to try and get you stuck with some chunky retreat cost Pokemon. Oh my goodness, he's gone first. He's benched a Blitzel. No Snubbles in sight. He's just had to pass here. Oh wow, uh, that was a pretty quick turn one there. I'm pretty sure Unless that was his turn one. Unless you're just mistaken again. Unless he was just flipping it all <laughs> over. Maybe I'm getting too excited. We'll have to see. <laughs> all right, calm down, calm down. So Pedro is playing uh, essentially that a more controlly uh, Zorak variant, not essentially the same list. He, we do see the Tapu Koko there. Uh, we see more attacking-oriented uh, things in his list, like Professor Kukui. Yeah, that's definitely right. It helps him when he needs to get over a hurdle. He can simply just take knockouts in order to do so. He does go for that textbook, Professor Elm's Lecture, off of this wonder tag, and he's going to start developing lots of Zerua here. He's already got his Slugma on the board, so this is an optimal turn one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just being able to fetch that Professor Elm's Lecture off that wonder tag makes your deck so consistent, and really why we see Zorark being so dominant as it is today. He's already holding on to a double colorless energy as well for future turns. Tapu Koko, a perfect pivot uh, as it has free retreat. He could go for a flying flip to put things in range, but really you'd like to 
if ever you're taking knockouts, you want it to be on Grambles. He is playing things like Professor Kukui, so a flying flip later down the line might be something that he actually looks for, but at the same time, so many controlling tools, he has options for whichever way he wants to play this. Yeah, uh, since he will be more lean towards attacking, he does have cards that will help him actually knock out Gramble in one hit. Mm -hmm. In Professor Kukui, he plays Devoured Field instead of that Lysander's Lab. Wow, he's going to commit to a retreat here. Yeah, well, pass you're, it over. you're not really scared of your opponent uh, being able to evolve and take a knockout this turn. So your Zoro is pretty safe. But even so, committing to retreat is such a strange move because you can always just do it next turn, regardless. No, he, he knows exactly what he wants to do. <laughs> he has that Zorak GX and the double colorless in his hand. Yeah. He's ready to go. It's the intimidation factor. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, so, so you were right. Yeah. That was a very quick turn one from Nikolas, and that's maybe why he felt comfortable retreating into the Zoro. He's like, yeah, you didn't even get a snubble out? <laughs> okay. Well, he's going to be able to go through his deck a little bit more now as he uh, has been able to evolve up straight into a Zeb Striker as well as a Mag Cargo, burning a switch as well to lower his hand size while smoothing over a perfect card to the top here. He may either have the option to sprint into it or instruct into it because he is holding onto a choice band at his current third card in hand, so he could just instruct into an Apricorn Maker and start developing some snubbles. Yeah, checking through his deck, making sure what is prized. Uh, we saw his opponent in the last Swiss round prize to Snubble, to Slugma, and still almost be able to pull it out. So that's one thing you have to watch out for with a deck like Granville. Yeah, the prize is Cambry Brutal. Uh, he can't be too happy about the fact that he's uh, um, prized a couple of these Shrine of Punishments. They are so important for putting Zoroks in range. Instead of going for an Instruct, he's going straight for the Sprint here, um, hoping to get as many cards as possible, especially if he puts an Apricorn Maker to the top. He could get lots of playables and also get an Instruct afterwards. He's drawn into a Diantha as well. Here comes the Apricorn Maker for <laughs> the two Nest Balls at the bottom of his deck. Those yeah. are the exact cards I need. Perfect. Pr here pretty comes easy the decision. Yeah. The second Nest Ball being played here. And it's Snubble number two. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see since Pedro's deck is a little bit different from the other control variants. It's more focused on attacking, like I've said. So because of that, Diantha actually turns into a pretty good card in this matchup, just being able to get back those resources like the energy that had been discarded. Yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on as the game progresses, how Pedro will sort of switch up his play style, whether he is going to be aggressive throughout the game or whether he's going to take you know, key prizes against things like the Mag Cargo and slow down the progression of Nicholas or whether or not he's going to keep getting, um, you know, that Orangaroo spam later down the line. Oh, and it's important to note, Alolan Muck has made its appearance on Damn. the field now. Thanks to Ditto Prism Star. Alolan That's Muck shutting crazy. down all basic abilities. Well, it's a good thing Nicholas got that Zeb Striker turn too because he's really going to need to be carried by that throughout this game as we see double colorless energy immediately onto the Zoroark. That's in Rata's beating range alongside uh, this Alolan Muck shutting down the Orangaroo. And uh, it really does make Nicholas's life more difficult to get all outs turn after turn. And there we have another Zoroark come down for Pedro there. Hand is looking pretty good right now. And I actually like the play from Nicholas last turn where he retreated into the Orangaroo knowing it was going to be a useless card in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. He knows how integral his own bench can be. Uh, and it means that later down the line, he can put down that Ditto, even if his, even if his Zeb Striker is going to get targeted by that um, by well, the Zoroark. If, as long as he can deal with the Muck, he can re-evolve yeah. into Zeb Striker later down the line. I was like, where are you going with this? Yeah, I was trying, <laughs> I was trying to piece it all together. <laughs> We do see more trades as he's going to build up his hand, get rid of an enhanced hammer, not the matchup for this one. And uh, he can end his turn on a Rattus beating if he wants to, or he could try and trap the Zoranguru, depending on how he wants to play it. Yeah, it's definitely interesting, especially when you kind of have to switch between these mm -hmm. two real ways of playing your deck. It's always flexible for him. He's actually just drawn into that Ditto Prism Star. It would be awkward for him to have to play it down just so that he could get an all-out attack off, but that might be what he has to do here. He's deciding to do it before the smooth over here. And uh, the awkward thing about sprinting is that you're drawing four cards, so you are always trying to find uh, ways to get down to zero if possible. Um, if you can't find a Shrine of Punishment, 
at the very least. Um, yeah, so he either has two options here. Uh, one option that he can do is guarantee the all-out by essentially getting Apricorn Maker on top of his deck. Uh -huh. Meaning you can just search for Ultra Ball, discard whatever you draw if it, you're not able to play it. Or you can just search for a couple Great Balls and maybe fail those. Otherwise, he can get the Shrine of Punishment and hope he just draws into something like a Fiery Flint where he can discard his hand. Let's see how Nicholas has tried to play it. He's got himself a couple of uh, Fairy Energy, it looks like. Yeah, He's going to uh, commit one of those to a Snubble. looking like much, but thankfully with the Choice Band, he is doing 60 with All Out, which means next turn it will be able to take a knockout. So he kind of took this turn off of actually doing things. Yeah, he's just going to correct himself that the manual attachment was onto the Gramble this turn, doing it all out just for 60. As he said, still setting up, still putting pressure on uh, Pedro to use the likes of an Acerola or a Max Potion here. Yeah, and he actually drew Acerola for the turn, so it could be something we see right away. There is also the option of maybe Guzma up the Macargo and take a knockout with one of the double cutlass in his hand. Big uh, Ultra Ball here. The rip off the top from trade. It can oh get yeah. him into Mag Cargo so he can get whatever he wants now. Eyeing up an escape rip on his own end here. But here comes the Ultra Ball. If he can start smoothing over, it's going to make his life a lot easier. And this is the power of that combo of Macargo and Zorark. Uh, kind of the original combo compared to Macargo and Orangaru <laughs> on uh, Nuklaas' side of the field. Yeah, they're both trying to make the most out of this smooth over ability, guaranteeing the perfect card to the top of their decks. One in a much more aggressive approach than the other, though. That is for sure. Uh, pretty much an ideal setup for Pedro here, although only two Zora can play. Kind of, his board is kind of cluttered right now. Yeah, it really is. And uh, especially if he has to Acerola this up, uh, he may be down to just, you know, a limited amount of trades throughout the entire game here. Um, again, we keep going back to how he wants to play the deck. Does he want to um, go into Tapu Koko, flying flip. He would set up Gramble and Snubble, and he could start, you know, just hoping that every now and then uh, Nicholas can whiff off of these sprints and uh, off of the Macargo. Or does he want to just go for a slower development here? Looks like he was putting Max Potion to the top, so that tells you something. Yeah, uh, he definitely has quite a few options as well. He could have gone for something like the Devoured Field. He already has the Professor Kakui mm -hmm. in hand. It would have been able to take a knockout on that Granville. But uh, even with the Guzma play on the Macargo, and then just Max Potion the active and attach again. But that's never really what you want to do if you can't take the knockout. Here comes the uh, Guzma on the Zeb Striker, again, trying to target down this engine. We also see the Max Potion healing off that important 60 damage. He's already holding on to a couple double colorless energies, so he can freely go into a new Zorowark and announce Riotus beating for another prize here. Yeah, this is not looking good for Nikolas here. Uh, just not drawing the cards he wanted last turn and having his only source of oh, draw come Oh, it's a here. Tails on a Pokemon catcher. Could have been huge for getting that Alolan oh, Muck into no. the active. Oh, that's really rough for him. Attaching to a Snubble here. And this is where uh, your card choices kind of uh, matter for a little bit of your deck where he has no draw power here. A card like Lost Blender would be pretty good to at least kind of cheat the smooth over into your hand. Meanwhile, he just plays Fiery Flint instead. Yeah, that's an interesting choice from him. As you mentioned, it's a little bit weak when you are seeing or staring down an Alolan Muck. Uh, that's a big Tails flip. Regardless, he's going to once again go for that all out for 60 damage, trying to set up the Sorak all over again. And that's one thing. Uh, we haven't really seen many of those Crushing Hammer cards from Pedro so far. Uh, so. He doesn't really have to worry about his fairy energy right now. Yeah, that's not the thing that's being targeted. Pedro's first going for the engine, trying to attack that. And then eventually he's hoping that the board is clear of all threats so that he can just keep announcing Rata's beating and eventually get over the line. Exactly. And we might even see just a Guzman play take out the Macargo and really limit Nicholas's play this game. We are going to see the smooth over into the trade, getting the Acer Roller into his hand again, trying to negate all the damage that Nicholas is coming up with so far. Also eyeing up a Guzma. Here comes the Macargo all over again. He's racing ahead in prizes whilst also taking out the integral pieces of Nicholas's board. And this is definitely a lot more aggressive play from some of the Zorak decks we've seen today. 
but it seems to be paying off in dividends for Pedro here. As we see him palpat in a couple more Guzmas, he's going to keep trying to attack these single prize <laughs> Pokemon with one hit knockouts uh, with this Rata's beating. Nicholas's board is looking like a pretty sad state right now. Yeah, I mean, it's working. Why not? Uh, this deck is so reliant on being able to set up your draws with Macargo and Zustrika and Oranguru. So everything that he's doing is making it so, yeah, you can't beat me when you attack for 60 damage a turn. <laughs> no, that's not going to be enough for you. Nicholas did smooth over a Guzma to the top of his deck. That's why he promoted the Ditto Prism Star, giving him that option to finally deal with the Aloha Muck. But is it too late for him right now? Yeah, uh, if another Guzma comes out from Pedro and targets down that Ditto Prism Star, it really is going to be trouble for Nicholas here. Mysterious Treasure not able to find anything. It does allow Nicholas to reduce his hand size so that the All Out can get a knockout on the Aloha Muck. So he's finally been able to deal with it. It's just so slow now. And having the extra energy is pretty good because Gramble does have a second attack. There is the Guzma, Alolan Muck being targeted yeah. down. That will be the last we will see from it. They do not, Pedro does not play an Alolan Grimer. So that Ditto Prism Star, which should be removed, uh, is the only way for it to get out. Yep, absolutely. So Pedro, three prizes up currently. He promotes that Tapu Coco. And, and uh, does not get a Shrine of Punishment <laughs> from the prizes. Ooh, that's a rough one. Really would have liked to have got that. Pedro pays his own Shrine of Punishments, believe it or not. Yeah, that's actually pretty interesting. It turns on his Acerolas, <laughs> and he's able to bump it away with the Devoured Field later if he wants. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, I mean, we've seen that with um, Grant Manley's uh, Zorark control list. It helped get extra damage counters on the board against some 180 hit point GX Pokemon like Rayquaza GX and Blacephalon GX. So uh, he's taken that approach. And here we see Professor Kakui coming down from the smoother, smooth over that will come on top of the deck. And then Trade will be able to get that. And if he has the Devoured Field, he actually could take a knockout here. Yeah, I think he's got it all in his hand, smoothing over that Kakui to the top. And uh, he can trade away his own Shrine of Punishment here. You've got to think he will. Oh boy, he's actually changing his own decision here. Maybe uh, because he has better outs to find Tapu Lele for the Professor Kakui. That uh, could be. Uh, Great sportsmanship here to allow, yeah. <laughs> to allow the uh, change of mind. As uh, we do see him instead put the stadium to the top. There's the Wonder yep. Tag. And it's going to mean he can grab himself that Professor Kakui. Yeah, that would have been pretty bad sequencing. Yeah. Kakui and then <laughs> Wonder Tag for oh, Kakui. Oh, not the Devoured <laughs> Field. Well, regardless, he's been able to get it all going now. And, and uh, that's really going to put pressure on Nicholas to even find anything next turn. Crushing Hammer flips tails. He could have dealt with the uh, Snubble in the back if he wanted to. Firing off, oh, no. firing off another one. Oh, no. This is It's just more cards that he needs. And remember, Nicholas doesn't really play any draw supporters. The only one that really counts is Tate and Liza. And that's prize two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to retreat out of the Tapu Koko now. The combination of uh, Devoured Field plus Professor Kakui. Full bench, right is beating, going to take a knockout on uh, Nicholas's only Granbull here. I, I, I think, is this version of Zork even more favored against Granbull than we thought of the regular uh, Zork control? I think a regular Zork control needs that limitation Sableye in order to trap um, Mag Cargos. So if you're not playing Rainbow Energies plus limitation, um, you need to be more aggressive against it because giving the Granbull too much time will allow them to take easy prizes on things like Tapu Lele's and such eventually. Yeah, uh, especially with Shrine of Punishment. Uh-huh. That's definitely the case. So looks like Nicholas got himself a great ball. A great here. ball. And, and uh, he's that scooping. will be the game. Nicholas does not have what he needs here. And Pedro will take game one. Yeah, he flew is, ahead there. Yeah, uh, one step closer to representing his home country in the finals. And you could hear what the crowd thought about it. All very pleased to see him take down that first game, taking a very aggressive approach, not giving Nicholas any time to build his board. That is one very specific thing about the Granbull archetype. It is so reliant on a combination of multiple Magcargos, multiple Orangaroos, and if that's not working, it's going to be a really slow deck, and it just gives Zorak enough time to trade into the exact cards it needs. Yeah, uh, it's definitely Zorak is just an overpowered card. <laughs> <laughs>
It's too good. It is really strong, and uh, we're seeing how it can be used efficiently as an attacker. So often we've seen it just for its ability here. Pedro saying, double colorless for 120, that's good enough for me, especially if I can buff it with the likes of Professor Kukui and also that the bad field stadium. Yeah, uh, it's been insane to watch this card ever since it was released at the beginning of London Internationals, the, the first one, I believe, with Tord winning with Zorak Lysepod. Uh, it has been at the top of the metagame and it will not go anywhere until it is rotated. Yeah, it just can access so many cards, give you the best optimal turns and allow you to really prey on every weakness that your opponent has as they're only allowed to draw, you know, a finite number in comparison to you. You can really make the most informed decision possible because you're seeing so many cards per turn and it allows you to be so, so punishing whenever any other deck misses a beat here. Yeah, and look at <laughs> that face, he's like, ah, I have to try to beat this matchup again? Yeah, it's going to be rough. It's going to be really rough. Time is on his side. He did concede with a good amount of time. So there are things that can definitely help him out here. Um, something like a Ditto Prism Star or an Alola Muck being prized could really get him into the game. Uh, also, finding his own trying of punishments a lot easier. Everything went badly for him, to be honest. His own prizes were really poor, and Pedro got a really powerful setup going quickly. He got also, not getting down. snubble turn yeah. one. Yeah, everything went badly for him game one, so... Uh, he's got to have a positive outlook if he wants to come back in this series. Well, I see at least one Snubble in his hand as a starter, so already better than last game here. Yep, he's benched three Pokemon. That's already a much better start. All right, looking at Pedro's prizes, double colorless there, meaning only access to three for early game. And remember, he doesn't really play uh, the Rainbow Energies like the others. Yeah, and we saw the Slugmer in the prize cards as well, which is pretty interesting for him, as we do see Nicholas kick off. He's now got two Snubbles on his board, as well as one Slugma. This is a much better start from him. And here we go. Game two in Masters top four here. Pedro up a game. Nicolas will need to put in a lot of work to make this comeback happen. Here comes Nestball number one, grabbing himself an Oranguru. He still needs to go for his regular game plan. There's no other way he has to win the game. He has had some crafty wins in mirror matches to stall out the opponent, but that's not the main goal of a Gramble player. You're never going to um, stall out a Zorowak, especially with resource management or Ranguru in the mix. So you've got to try and be as aggressive as possible and get your board set up turn one. Yeah, and making sure he has everything he needs for the matchup. And making sure, okay, I need to know where that Blitzel and Zeebstrika and the Ditto are. Uh, those are very important in this matchup. But he does have some bit of game against Alolan Muck just by the essence of going first. And imagine if that counter cat, oh sorry, that uh, regular Pokemon catcher had flipped heads. He could have dealt with the Alolan Muck and uh, been in a much better stead way quicker in the game. It just felt like he was too far behind. If that had been a heads flip, the Alolan Muck would have been knocked out in a good amount of time while his board was still much more reasonable. So uh, there's many things that went against him game one, in all honesty. And it's all down to him to make sure that doesn't phase him and that he can do a much better job in this second game here. All right, first a Rangaroo drawing two cards off of Instruct. I see an Ultra Ball, and that is good enough to pass the turn there. Pedro now looking for a Professor Elms Lecture. I see a Tapu Lele Wonder Tag. That's well, the Telltale that's sign. It. Let's see what he's going to go ahead and grab. Couple Zeru is off the gate uh, as he does pull the Professor Elms Lecture to the front. The Ditto Prism Star. It's got to be that Ditto. I don't know if you heard me earlier, but I, I finally cemented it. Yeah. I, I'm like, Ditto Prism Star is the best card out of Lost Thunder, it, bar none. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue. The only other card that I could think of is the card he's using to find that Ditto, yeah. the Professor Elms <laughs> Lecture. <laughs> it's that combination. They've come out in the same set, which makes them both so, so valuable. Yeah, really just allowing these Stage 1 decks to really put anything in. Yeah, and uh, the Alola Muck not seen in any real Zorak archetype in Standard. It was an amazing include in Expanded just because of the sheer amount of abilities that you shut off. Now it's a great one-off tech card that only takes up one slot to really improve matchups like these. Yeah, uh, you don't need to start Alolan Grimer some games and just lose because it has three or four retreat. Uh, you can just, yeah, I, I started Ditto, it's fine. And the joy of that Ditto is that if it's uh, a matchup where a Lola Buck's not good, it's going to be a Slugma or it's going to be a Zerua and you're going to get yourself set up regardless. All right, and then we see a pass of the turn back to Nicholas. 
Smooth over to start it off, I believe. Yeah, that looks to be the case. I, I don't know if that was a raw man cargo or if he spent his ultra ball to find it and this is his smooth over. Regardless, he's getting that setup going. Or no, maybe he's just ultra balling now for the grand ball. A uh, pretty insane start. I think he's going for a big turn here. I think he's trying to deal with this ditto turn one. Or turn two, I mean. Yeah, really needs access to Guzma and a fairy energy along with getting his hand down to zero cards. Does he hit one of them he needs? He's got Apricorn Maker. He's got Shrine of Punishments. He's also got um, another Snubble. Uh, looks like there's no combination, no energy cards in there either. And he's already spent his Smooth over here. Oh, man. It's not going to be easy for him. He's going to commit a Shrine of Punishment. He can use that Apricorn Maker to get himself into a Gramble to be a little bit safer against an upcoming Zoroark, but I don't know what else he can pull off here. He could use the Apricorn Maker to get something like uh, just a Nest Ball to develop another Slugma or um, a Ditto so to prepare for next turn. So he could go Ultra Ball, get a Grand Ball, uh -huh. and then smooth over for the Fairy Energy. He's already smoothed over, though. Oh, he has. Yeah, so he'd have to he'd have to use Instruction sure? Just Hope. I'm pretty sure he has. No, I'm pretty sure he Ultra Ball for the Grand Ball. Oh, you're right. The, the Orangaroo is sideways. Yeah. He likes to tap his abilities. Yeah. Okay, we're looking pretty good then. Yeah, uh, so... Great Ball and Ultra Ball. Great Ball could just be a card he uses to discard for the Ultra Ball here or just play it to get it out of his hand. And then you can Ultra Ball for the Grand Ball, smooth over for the Fairy, and then as long as you have enough cards, you can play it down. Here comes the Great Ball. There's the Pokemon Catcher, which you no. would love to see. No Pokemon there. Really awkward for him. So now here's the, the interesting part. Uh, not enough cards in hand to actually use the Ultra Ball now. Snubble being played to second instruct. Let's see what it brings him. He has the Fairy Energy, but again, not having uh, enough cards in hand really to get the whole combo in play. Smooth over right at the end of his turn. Um, trying to set up for the next one, it looks like. Yeah, I, I would hope it's a Guzma. Put it on top. That way, next turn, you just Guzma the Ditto if it becomes yeah. an Alolan Muck. Absolutely. That's got to be what he's putting to the top here. Passing it over to Pedro, getting one damage counter on the Tapu Lele, which is an important amount of damage counters because it gets you into a, a Gramble range with all outs later down the line. So nice that he was able to put that stadium in play for at least one turn as Pedro immediately replaces it with his own. Yeah, well, the 10 damage might matter a lot just because it means he doesn't need a choice band uh -huh. uh, to actually take the knockout on the Tapu Lele. Man, a lower muck, turn two, both games, into a Cynthia. If he can get a few Zoroaks here, he's going to have another dominant start. Yeah. Uh, so, again, we see kind of a weird place in Nicolas's hand. He has the Fairy Energy, which he needs next turn. He has the Ultra Ball, and then he has a Field Blower. But if the top of his deck is the Guzma, like we assume, he won't be able to profitably play the Ultra Ball while keeping the Fairy Energy. Yeah, because all of his Instructs have been shut down. He can't get any more cards into his hand. There's no sign of any Zeb Striker action going on. And uh, Pedro hasn't drawn into any energy cards just yet, but he has got himself an Ultra Ball to start trading. He is going to go ahead and grab himself that Zoroark GX. Going to put it onto the bench where it's a little bit safer because he doesn't have a huge amount of odds here to find double colorless, knocking out a snubble. So uh, if there's no right of speeding, that's going to be a small break for Nicholas because we know how aggressive Pedro likes to play this batch up. Oh, uh, there's a double colorless right on the top, and he has no Zorark. I thought it was, but it was a Tapu Lele in his hand. Yeah, it's just the Tapu Lele. So it does pass over to Nicholas. We might just see another pass from Nicholas here. Uh, Playing the Great Ball meant he just doesn't have enough cards in his hand. So we could see maybe just a card like Diantha even. Uh, but he might just want to put something that he can for sure burn off the top of his deck. Yeah, that's got to be what he wants to look for. I don't know if he put a Rescue Stretcher to the, to the top or was it the Diantha? It was a Nest Ball. That was a Nest Ball. That's one that you can always play. Uh, well, only if you <laughs> receive a KO or if... Uh, well, he has the Ultra Ball in hand. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, okay, so he's, uh, he's he's setting up, being patient. He knows he needs to deal with the lower muck for the longevity of this game. So that's why we're seeing him, once again, have some patient approach play. 
or is Pedro going to try and find himself some energies this turn? Yeah, and choosing to go this route also kind of saves his energy from Pedro as well. I don't believe Pedro plays the Team Skull Grunt like the other players that were playing the Zorak control variants are. So the ha energy in hand is kind of safe. Yeah, and uh, we are going to see the Great Ball number one. I think uh, really, again, looking for those Zoroarks. He traded away a Tapu Lele, obviously shut off by his own Aloha Muck. He does find himself a Zorak off that Great Ball, a big hit for him. His ideal turn is to, once again, use a Guzma and knock out a Magcargo. That would be the dream for him, seeing as though he's already shut down a couple of Rangaroos. Uh, he's going to look at that Kakui. He's going to play it here to draw two more cards, getting him a little bit deeper into the deck. Um, he does still have another great ball that he's drawn into. Lots of Zoroarks potentially hitting this board. Yeah, really need to look for that double colorless energy to just take a knockout here. He's committed to there the There is Professor another Kukui. Zorark. Oh boy, he's going to get uh, four more draws to try and find double colorless and start initiating this prize race. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if he actually gets it. Remember, uh, he only plays the four double colorless compared to the other list where they actually play three double colorless and two rainbow. Yeah, so he's actually got uh, slightly better odds to try and find it here. Um, he's going to get rid of, it looks like the counter catcher there. One no. more trade. No, Two supporters. Yet. Last Zorowart, can he get into the cards that he's after here? Looks like he's still holding on to that Oranguru pretty carefully. There's a lot of good cards he wants to keep here. Trading Getting rid of the Ultra Ball, not painless. And it does not look like he got the double colorless, and Nikolas will survive another turn of essentially just this pressure. Yeah, it means that now he can be taking his first prize on an Aloha Muck. And last time he was taking a prize on Aloha Muck, being three prizes down. Yeah. So this is really going to help him in the tempo of the game and really just allow him to get back into a really powerful board state as he is going to fire off this Ultra Ball, get himself uh, a Grand Ball, attach energy and play a Guzma and deal with that muck finally. Yeah, this is exactly what Niklas has been wanting to do here. And it, there it is. Guzma, bring up the Lolan muck. All, or smooth over first, of yeah, course. Yeah. Set up next turn. And then All Out will be able to take the knockout and Orangaroos will be active for the rest of the game. That's going to be so huge for him to maintain uh, this all-out pressure for the maximum damage output. Too often was he just happy or having to just do 60 damage in game one. Now that he has both Orangaroos online once again and Smooth Over available to him, currently he's going to be doing a lot more work every single turn. Yeah, and uh, it's really going to show just because Orangaroo is a lot better than Zubastrika in this deck. Uh, you don't want to keep drawing four cards and especially discard cards that you might want later on. And Orangaroo really just allowing you to like, okay, I'm going to get an Ultra Ball, put it on top, and then just draw one card. Oh, it's the Ultra Ball. I'm good. <laughs> Interesting crushing hammer there from Pedro. He is eyeing up Professor Kakui, which he actually trades away, interestingly enough. So he's going for an alternate route this turn. His aggressive approach worked last time. This time he's going for some sort of different route here as he trades away his own Shrine of Punishment. That's the card oh, that and uh, he, Nicholas moved over. He finally got the double colorless off the top of the deck. There's actually a Ditto Prism Star in his discard pile, <laughs> which we do need to sort. Yeah. But uh, looks like he's finally found double colorless energy. Escape Rope as well could help him out. If he can Guzma and deal with the Mag Cargo, that could still put him in pretty good shape here. Yeah, eyeing down Ace of Rolla to pick up that Tapu Lele. Remember, that's an easy prize card. Yeah. Uh, four Grand Bull already doing a base 160 damage. It's a good way for him to, as you say, try and remove that sort of easy couple prizes. He's also going to use an escape rope, it looks like, here. Looks oh. like he's going to try and recover some resources and go for a more patient approach this game. Nicholas is like, okay, I'll bring up my Gramble. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I thought you were going to be taking prizes against me. Well, when he's behind, he can still turn into this completely different beast where he's going to go for a completely different route for victory. Yeah. And hopefully they put that dead person. There, there we go. go. You got it. That would be a bad card to put back in your deck. <laughs> We are going to see him eyeing up again that escape rope, a crushing hammer, and a counter catcher with resource management going to the bottom of his deck. And we'll see how Nicholas can respond here with a perfect engine now fully online. What can he do with it? He has a Guzma and a Shrine of Punishment in his hand. The Guzma could have been perfect on the Tapu Lele if, were it not for that Acerola last turn. 
So he's going to have to settle for a Zoroark, replace that stadium, use a smooth over. Putting, I don't know what it was at the top Probably there. a fairy energy because you guarantee at least 40 damage on this Zoroark and kind of force your opponent yeah. to play a max potion or else this Zoroark's going to get knocked out with one more turn of shrine damage. Yeah, the dream is of course that you can all out for the full value, providing things like choice band in addition to this energy. If not, yeah, it was definitely the energy card that he put there. So he is going to commit it to this Gramble. He yeah, has a second instruct bad. available. He actually drew an Ultra Ball as well, but Ooh. with that Shrine of Punishment off the top, I don't know if he wants to actually discard it. Absolutely, you're right. The 160 damage is no different to the 40 yeah. that you'd be putting on the active in terms of trying to get a two-hit KO. Um, so we are going to see just the all-out for the oh, and there's damage. there's the Devoured Field to replace <laughs> it, but with the Shrine of Punishment, that's actually what Niklas wanted. Ooh, Max Potion, though, straight off the top. He's got that Guzma all over again. He's going to uh, trade away one of his Cynthia's. As we said, he's not playing the limitation Sableye, uh, Pedro, so he can't trap a Mad Cargo quite as easily as someone like Caleb's or uh, Daniel's list. He's just hoping whenever he gusts up something like a Ranguru or Mad Cargo that um, Nicholas can't get the right combination of yeah. switching cards. Which is crazy to think about that uh, Nicholas actually beat uh, Zora Control yeah. with Sableye in it. it. He beat the more teched out list, yeah. <laughs> which is pretty incredible from him. As uh, we are seeing Pedro uh, playing out his turn here, figuring out what to do. He's got himself a Tapu Koko as a nice, as a nice pivot for future turns. Going to put that onto the board. He's eyeing up that Guzma here. Once again, targeting down the three retreat cost by Cargo. In comes his own Oranguru, trying to take away all the resources from Nicholas. Seeing as though he's starting to fall a little bit behind in the prize race, he's gone into defensive mode. Yeah, and there is trade crushing hammer off that trade. Going to continue to cycle a little bit further. Another, Another one. crushing hammer. Here they come. He's going to start to flip that dice, try and make it difficult. Tails. Tails on the first. He needs to borrow some luck from Michael Pramwat here. <laughs> and, and he does get heads. So now it's going to require. Again, it, it just makes it a little bit harder to get that full all-out attack. We keep saying that Gramble's a puzzle, and forcing your opponent to have more pieces of that puzzle every time just makes it all the more difficult to achieve. So uh, Pedro forcing a Macargo active once again, removing energy from Nicholas. These are all the things that are so frustrating to deal with for him. Yeah, and we al also saw that Max Potion come down, heal that 40 damage from Zorark, meaning it is pretty safe from a knockout gear. Ooh, we've just seen oh him shuffle no. with resource management. We didn't really see, there wasn't much time to see the three cards that he put back in either. Oh, no. This is my biggest fear when yeah. playing Oranguru. Uh, oh, no. It puts three cards from your discard on the bottom of your deck in any order. And we saw when Daniel was playing how important that order can be. You can put uh, the worst one to the top just so you can trade away and find the bottom two. So the fact that he shuffled them in, definitely not the thing to do here. Seeing that he doesn't have a Mad Cargo on his board either. He is living my worst nightmare right now. <laughs> that is just a slip of the mind. And uh, it's going to be an awkward resolution here. But um, it could be. Uh, uh, it, it'll awkward. depend because uh, usually you can name off the cards that you get. Like, I'm going to put this, this, and this back. Mm -hmm. And that technically would be an easy fix. But then again, you still change the order of your deck. Yeah. And that's, uh, you know, he had no legal way of doing that. So that's also something that we have to consider here. And he did it so quickly as well. He just sort of shoved the three in eyesight of Nicholas and put them straight into his deck and started shuffling. Um, I don't even know if that was enough time for Nicholas to register the three cards. Yeah, uh, this is really what happens. Uh, the pressure and all this stuff, your deck being a natural, slow, controlling deck, you really try to just move fast so you can get these games over. Pedro so focused on the actual three cards he was putting back, he was completely forgetting the... A uh, small detail of putting them to the bottom of the deck here. So we're going to see how this has been resolved. Oh, man, how heartbreaking for Pedro here. Uh, up a game and looking like to start taking a little bit of control here. Granted, without the Alolan and Muck, uh, Nicholas does have a pretty good game plan. So I wonder how this has finished. We're going to have to wait for confirmation to let you guys know. But it's looking like... 
they are going to leave the deck shuffled. And Nicholas did draw his card for the turn. All right, we're, we're moving onwards. We see um, an interesting hand from Nicholas. Some Shrine of Punishment can be put back into play, as well as Palpad. That's going to be huge for him to keep moving this Mad Cargo out of the active position, because that's going to be what Pedro is going to try and do to stop and deny Nicholas from ever taking the full six prize cards. Um, yeah. So recycling those two Guzmas is going to be huge here. Yeah, recycling his only uh, yeah. two Guzmas, I believe. Definitely a great find from him. He does have Instruct number one that he can Ultra Ball away if he wishes. Uh, he's also drawn into Mysterious Treasure, but here comes Ultra Ball. He can get himself out of Gramble if he wants to, to evolve his final Snubble on the bench. And uh, that leaves him with... Um, one smooth over and one instruct to try and get his own mad cargo out of the active. We have to stress as well, in addition to those two Guzmas, he does also play a Tate and Liza. So that's going to be a big way to move his mad cargo as well. Yeah, we actually saw him use Tate and Liza to shuffle draw in, into five both <laughs> times uh, during his last round of Swiss. Here we do see the Tate and Liza coming on top of the board with that, or on top of the deck, I should say, with that smooth over ready to instruct into it. So let's see if it pays off for Nicholas here. Yeah, we'll need a little bit of luck, though, off of the top of his deck. Uh, not having uh, energy and really just needing an energy and then a card to burn. Ooh, the Slugma, not a playable card. He did get the energy. Oh, no. But his board is full, so he's just going to, again, be patient. Let that Shrine of Punishment tick over, putting these Zoroaks into much nicer ranges with just a Choice Band away now. Yeah, and there is a double colorless off the top from Pedro. He's going to start trading, getting his uh, his hand sorted. Uh, Judge in his hand is another card that could kind of disrupt this Gramble strategy, uh, just adding four cards to your opponent's hand. Yeah, absolutely the case. If he, you know, there's no energy on the board that he can disrupt, so there's no like Plumeria or Team Skullgrunt action necessarily. He's actually just drawn into that Plumeria. So perhaps something like a judge, but at the same time, he's trying to accumulate his own hand. Let's see what he's going to try and pal, back, uh, pal pad back in. Maybe some more of those Ace of Roller pieces. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what he chooses. That's the thing with Zorak decks in general. You have so many options in combination with Oranguru that you really have to think out every action. Looks like it's going to be a Guzma and one other card. I didn't quite catch. Possibly the Ace of Roller. Either that or a Cynthia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely could be an option as well for more shuffle draw. Let's see what he wants to play, if at all, any supporter here. Um, he's got a double colorless energy that he might want to commit as well. Lots of different options for him. As always, you're a Zorak deck. Yeah, he actually could start attacking with Tapu Koko as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be the worst of just using resource management. Yeah. But it true. is definitely an option for him. And if he sticks a Macargo active for a while and gets a few flying flips, that could be really beneficial for him. Instead, he's not going to commit the energy to any Pokemon, and he's just going to play Judge, putting his own hand size down, and Nicholas getting a fresh four that he hasn't seen before, trying to randomize that element and make it more difficult, stop Nicholas producing a game plan to make it all happen in one turn. Yeah, I... Uh, Although his hand wasn't the greatest, no. having that Slugma that is basically unplayable. And he did have the Energy and the Tate and Liza, but drawing four cards, he could just draw into some of those again. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He's actually drawn into one of those Goosebers that he's just got back in. Wow, I think he's just got four just playable cards in his hand. Wow. That's one way to do it. He's uh, still got a top deck, of course. Devoured Field coming down and bumping the Shrine of Punishment, but the damage is already done here. Uh, two damage counters on two of the Zoroks, meaning just a choice band energy and zero cards in hand will be able to take a knockout on I a Zorok. I think he's DX. got it all, man. I think it, as long as his top deck is playable, he's got himself choice band energy, Grand Bull, Guzma. What a judge. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to see oh. the resource management getting back that max potion, the stadium, as well as that pal pad. Lots of options again for Pedro. And remember, the order is key here as well. Yeah, there we go. He'll never make that mistake again. Passing it over. Is it a playable? Oh, it's a snubble. Snubble. He can um, play his cards he could in play the down right his, order play to down then cards, ultra ball away. And then even just Mysterious Treasure. Or Mysterious Treasure. Yeah, spot on. Here comes the Gramble Evolution into the smooth over. He's definitely got a way to do it as long as he has 
uh, the correct the, the uh, awkward thing though is cards. if he has access to mysterious treasure wow I don't I'm looking through his deck right now and I can't see many more discardables left he's gone through a lot of ultra balls that's not an option for oh him no I think he's he's having to he's spent a lot of these ultra balls he doesn't play lost mixer I don't even think fiery flints in there oh wait I I think there is a mysterious treasure right there Oh, is there still one treasure remaining? Yeah, but looking at Diantha eyeing it up here. Wow. This is an interesting turn. Putting it on top of the deck. There is the Guzma, Guzma bringing up the Zork with 10 damage. So kind of spreading out his damage a little bit. So he could have maybe overextended to take a knockout on the Zorak GX on the bench but instead opts to just add 40 more damage to the active Zorark here. Now he can knock out any of them. Yeah, trying to get multiple Zoroarks in range. As you saw, Pedro put back the Max Potion that turn. So even if um, Pedro does go for an Acerola plus Max Potion play, there's still one Zoroark in range. All right, and it looks like he's checking his discard here. Maybe eyeing up a Rescue Stretcher. That looks to be the case as he is holding on to one that does give him the ability to shuffle his deck which he did put the max potion on the bottom yep here comes more tapu leles back into his deck he's using the three effect to get leles back as well as i think it was one of the zoroark and uh, he's going to start trading into hopefully in his case max potions acerolas any other disruptive cards as well he might still continue to go down this line of trying to gust up the mag cargo and having the Plumeria in his hand as well could just opt to trade it away. Mm -hmm. And I believe he already traded with the active, but uh, he does have two more Zoroark in play. Trades away, Zoroark trades away. Tapu Lele draws into another one, also finds himself a Guzma. Is he going to try and just go for a resource management whilst gusting up the Makago once again? He's got Counter Catcher as well. It'll be interesting to see what he does here. I got Plumeria, so he could go for some sort of escape rope plus count catcher, uh, plus Plumeria play. He could really get a, like all play of his down hand his down. Whole hand. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if he so wishes, he's gonna have a look through the discard pile. He knows that Palpat's gone, one Guzma's gone. He hasn't seen sight of Tate and Liza just yet, so he's trying to calculate how many more times he has to bring up this Mac Cargo. And if he's going to be able to do it enough times before enough all outs are announced for big prizes. All right. Tough decision here for Pedro. Has plenty of options. And you're seeing now, even though he traded away a Tapunele, he might be using Wonder Tag here just to Acerola even. Uh, here comes the t Wonder Tag. I mean, Acerola is definitely really good. Gets that free two prizes off of the board, brings up your Oranguru and allows you to at least force your opponent to have the Guzma again. Yeah, and Nicholas has tried to sort of be tactical and slow with his play. He's tried to um, really conserve everything so that he can wait for the opportune moments to get all out. But using Acerola this turn sort of puts him on a clock a little bit to start accessing those Zoroarks because otherwise Nicholas can, or sorry, Pedro can, keep using things like Palpad and resource management to recycle uh, that Acerola all over again. Here we see the counter catcher, Makargo back into the active position, and we're gonna see that resource management all over again. Yeah, it is crazy to think how different game one and game two has looked from Pedro's side of the board. Game one really capitalizing on Nicholas's slow start of zero snubble in play turn one. He's like, okay, I'm just gonna riot a speeding, like <laughs> basically every turn, take a knockout. And then now, he has yet to use Riotous Feeding, really just resource management. I'm going to heal a bunch of guys, keep it in play, and this is what we've seen from this deck. That's the flexibility of this Zorak Control Archetype. It can put the squeeze on in two different ways. It can go long if it starts falling behind, or if it can uh, jump ahead, it's going to do that as well. And Nikolas getting the Guzma from the smooth over. Goes on top of the deck, and I believe just pass. a pass. That's a dream for Pedro. It's going to allow him once again to get a free resource management off and uh, develop that Zoroark once again. 
Maybe he can draw into some more healing cards. He's just found himself Ace Arola again. And Palpad. And Palpad. Uh, <laughs> it's a All pretty good combo. Eyeing up Plumeria as well as a potential card to play this turn as there is an energy waiting on that Gramble. And another Guzma as well. This is where the Zork deck starts to get out of hand. Uh, resource management combined with trade is just an insane combo and really just allows you to control the game. Trade number three, finds himself another energy card. And he's also going through that debate whether it's worth trying to Acerella something up. He's had to put down a Tapu Lele, so it feels like he's not too viable in comparison to a Plumeria. And that's why we're going to see him use it to remove the energy off Gramble, trying to again force more pieces out of Nicholas all in one turn, while he once again goes for that resource management. Yeah, and here we see eyeing down that Ace Roll in the discard, looking to pal pad it back yeah. into the deck along with Guzma. Pal pad first, so you can resource management pal pad back again. <laughs> that it's ain't a bad It's a play. pretty good combo. Yeah. So he's going to keep trying to loop this, make Nicholas have energy plus Guzma all in one turn, whilst also being able to get down to a zero card hand. He's running really low on Ultra Balls and Fiery Flints and Mysterious Treasures. This is going to be the mission for him to try and get the perfect combination uh, over a number of turns, because he still has a lot of prizes to take. Yeah, only having access to one Guzma left in his deck, which he did put on top with Smooth over last turn. So having that, but can he get his hand down? He's going for it. Here comes a Guzma play. He's going to... Uh, he has go for a smooth over as well. He has Snubble and Nest Ball in his hand. Those are two cards that he cannot play. So can he even get his hand down enough to instruct to get the top card? And smoothed no. over for a Titan Lizer and just passed. And I feel like you never really want a Guzma uh, <laughs> if you're not going to take a knockout here. It's really limiting his options and really... That Tatan Liza is his last hope. This is so awkward for him. We know Pedro's got a mountain of Guzmas already in his hand. You've got to think he's going straight for that Mag Cargo all over again. Yeah, he has infinite Guzmas. Yeah, <laughs> he can trade some away, but we know he's got another one in the hand. And he's got Countercatcher that he's just drawn into as well. So he can combine <laughs> um, Countercatcher with Ace Rotor if he wants to. That's just being mean. Like, you, you know that... Guzma really like just messes your whole board state up, and then he goes, I'm going to trade away one. Trade number two. I have two. enough. I have enough. Finds the max potion. He just keeps finding the trainer equivalent of all these support cards. <laughs> He's going to play the Guzma now. Bring, Bring back up that hefty Mag Cargo. He's already and eyeing up the, po the things that he wants off the resource management. Yeah, he, he has needs to bring to up his, his uh, Pokemon first. from Guzma. Uh, a little too ahead here for yeah. Pedro. <laughs> Here we go. He's looking through his discard pile once again. Traded away three supporters that turn. He might just and want to yeah, recycle those. There it and Nicholas is. is done. Pedro Henrique moves on to the finals of the Latin America International Championships here in the 2018-19 season. It's another win for Zoroark Control. A very different style deck. So it's just demonstrating how powerful this deck can be, how flexible it is. Winning a very convincing game one, racing down those prizes, dealing with the Mag Cargos, Bring, uh, bringing out that muck, slowing down the Gramble player. And in game two, a little bit slower start, missed a few energy cards, and he went for the full control mode. Yeah, and that's just the power of this deck to switch on a dime your play style. And we will have possibly a repeat of Brazil taking home their <laughs> international championships. Yeah, he's their last hope, and that's why the crowd has gone wild for him. Commiserations to Nicholas, piloting such a creative Gramble archetype getting so far again it's a brand new build requires a lot of stress and thought throughout every single turn of the game and uh, he's done a brilliant job with that deck yeah uh, it has been uh, great